Hello and welcome to today's webinar where we're asking how does amazing communication help HR to engage talent in the hybrid workplace? My name is Bogdan Tiganov. I'm the head of content community at Cypher. Cypher is a specialist provider of SaaS HR, payroll, recruitment and learning software through our HCM platform, Cypher Connect. Cypher Connect is designed to provide a frictionless people experience across an organization's entire employee lifecycle also enables seamless integration, not only with Cypher's own solutions, but also to an ecosystem of specialist third-party tools using our modern API technology. And one of those partners is our people. Uh, happy to say that joining me today is Ross McCall, the CEO of our people. Welcome, Ross. Hi, Bogdan. And just before we start, I'm just gonna go over the agenda for today's webinar. Um, so first up, we've got deskless communications today. We're going to look at the internal communication problem, mobiles in the workplace, and how to measure communication, increasing employee engagement, and increasing employee productivity. And just to let you know that the webinar is being recorded, and if you're watching live, the recording will be emailed to you tomorrow. That's the 24th of September. And also, just for your information, um, you can enter questions during the webinar, and when we get to the Q&A session at the end, uh, we'll address those questions. Um, and just before we start onto the main presentation, we're just gonna launch a quick poll. So we're gonna ask, what tools does your business use for internal communications? And while people are voting, Ross, welcome. Um, have you seen a change in the last year in how organizations are communicating with employees? Yeah, it's a really good question. So um, as I'll come, to, come on to in a second, we was sort of born out of the fitness industry so that was the kind of industry that we were watching very closely um, and there was a sort of a real kind of movement towards keeping furloughed employees engaged and sort of letting them know what was going on so that was very interesting um, and we also saw a lot of sort of um, upskilling employees as well and, and and kind of micro learning and that kind of thing through our platform so yeah it was, it was a really really interesting time that's cool um, I'm just going to close the poll now and share the results. Ah. Yeah, interesting. What do you think? Quite, yeah. quite, a, quite a few people using the unofficial channels. Yeah, slightly less than I was anticipating. Yeah. But, uh, yeah, email, email is normally quite high as well. So yeah, no, that's mm. really, really interesting. Thanks for, uh, thanks for everyone's vote there or, or input. Okay, I'm just going to hide that poll and then over to you, Ross. Great, thanks, Bogdan. Um, so let me just progress this one on. There we go. Um, yeah, so uh, thanks everyone for joining today. Um, I think just wanted to start with a bit of background on, on me and, and the company. Um, so as I said, we were sort of born out of the fitness industry. My previous um, kind of uh, career, my previous life was in the fitness industry. Um, and I founded Our People back in 2016. Um, and it was mainly because of this sort of disconnect between management and frontline teams and, and the way that management were communicating with frontline teams. And I'll come on to that in a bit more detail in a second. And we initially launched in the fitness industry, um, but fast forward five years, we're now across multiple sectors, utilities, attractions, um, retail. Um, and we've also got offices based in the UK and the USA. Um, slightly funny anecdote. We uh, Majority of our customers in the UK um, were in the fitness industry. Our first customer in the US was Dunkin' Donuts. So uh, that was quite a, a, a humorous transition when we when we launched in the US. So the main thing or the main audience I wanted to focus on today um, is effectively the people that we call the, the deskless worker. So it's estimated that around 80% of the global workforce are deskless. So that's people who have limited access to a computer or corporate email. Um, and generally, they have the most interactions with customers, but are the least informed. And so generally, our customers come to us looking for a way to, to securely communicate with those employees. And just to kind of open with, with some, some sort of high level stats here. So generally, they, they, the, the kind of the research that's out there says that 2.7 billion people globally fall into this essential work category. So that's anything from healthcare to agriculture, maybe construction or manufacturing and transportation. 59% um, currently are using a tablet or smartphone as part of their job, but 73% are still using paper forms to carrying, carrying out their tasks. And that, we call this doubling up, and I'll come onto that again in a little bit. And 71% have said 
that digital tools would make them happier and more productive in the workplace. So yeah, just a couple of stats to open with there. Generally, when we start engaging with our prospective customers, we, we tend to hear this phrase, we tend to hear them say, we, we see the importance in internal communication, but we don't really know the value. Um, and ultimately, that sort of boils down to budget constraints. Um, but it's something that we hear a lot, and it's a problem that we, we, um, we aim to help our, problem, our customers solve. So just to run a scenario past you, so a workplace without effective communications, what does that look like? So generally what we see is a high rate of sort of rumors and, and disinformation, um, maybe a sort of a lack of truth and, and, and a chaotic sense of purpose. So effectively employees doing what they think they should be doing rather than what they actually should be doing. Um, and what we see as well is sort of unofficial, unofficial communication channels. So um, I think it was 8% on the poll. Um, normally, normally that's generally tends to be higher than uh, business owners or, or managers think. So that's the likes of sort of WhatsApp and Facebook closed groups and, and that kind of thing. And as I said, those organizations with the most, um, those, those organizations with the most cost customer contact, so those employees with the most customer contact are generally the least informed. And so what we realized very early on in, in, in kind of the, the early days of our people is mobile had to be the way to go. Um, it had to be the way to, to engage with these employees. And I just wanted to share a few more stats with you. So every year we run um, an annual survey and what we what we focus on specifically is the app users. So effectively, our people has two parts. It has um, a manager kind of area where more senior management can log in via a computer. But the majority of those users, the majority of those deskless workers access the platform via an app. And the reason that we focus predominantly on those app users is generally they are the most difficult users to engage. Um, and as I said, we run this every year. So this poll was um, results from August 2020. So we're actually due the next um, the next uh, set of numbers, I think, in the next month or so. Um, but the results were effectively 76% found that our people were the best way to communicate with employees. 79% found our people was the best way to stay up to date on company news and that kind of thing. 80% found our people specifically useful during lockdown. So that was an incredibly interesting insight during, during the lockdown, during the closure of a lot of the facilities that we um, that our customers run. And 74% recommended our people to a friend or colleague. So fairly, uh, fairly compelling stats for us, which is great. Obviously, that's good news for us. Um, but ultimately, just to apply that on a workplace with effective communication. So just flipping the previous slide. So effectively, generally what we see is, is sort of more clarity, more kind of um, a clearer sort of source of truth, a clearer place for employees to go for information. Um, consistency of branding. So effectively, you know, your, your brand and the way that you do things is, is, is sort of amplified more clearly. The other important point is employees, they, they sort of feel more listened to and engaged with rather than done at, which again, I'll come to in a bit more detail in a second. But ultimately, I think this boils down to a, a better employee experience ultimate, ultimately delivers a better customer experience. And that's, um, that's kind of the key message here. So I wanted to move on um, to looking at sort of mobiles in the workplace and, and, and how, I guess, things have changed over the course of the last five years with sort of bring your own device policies and, and um, sort of pivoting your organization to, to ultimately embrace mobile phones. And, and the problem is, I'm sure people have seen this, that mobile phones can be incredibly distracting and you see people walking down the street and ultimately doing things like this. Um, you know, whenever I walk into work, the number of times that I nearly crash into people on their phones. And I think really the, the key thing here is that they can be incredibly distracting. And how do you manage that in terms of sort of acknowledging what uh, mobiles as a way to communicate with your staff? And when we tend to start engaging with our customers, we, we, we tend to get sort of three um, sort of reasons why um, they'd rather stick to the internet and, and a computer-based tool. And here are the three, and I'm sure there's more, um, but effectively fear of sending, sending a wrong message to the staff. So the idea that if you are telling your employees that you are engaging with them through a mobile platform, Therefore, it's fine for them to be on Instagram and Facebook and TikTok and all the other apps while they're stood serving a customer. 
And the key kind of um, the key kind of answer to that is that the behaviour already exists. So it's a just really key thing to acknowledge. First of all, you know, people people do tend to have their phones with them, and if it's not on their phone, it's on their wrist, on their watch. Um, but where we find kind of a successful solution to that problem is employers just need to be really, really clear with employees on what is and is not acceptable. So, you know, you can use your phone in a breakout room during lunch, but it's not acceptable for you to, to use it on the shop floor, for example. And that generally tends to sort of clear that one up. Um, we also have issues around, um, you know, fear of exclusion, uh, you know, 99.9% .9 of the people in our business have a smartphone, but what about the 0.01%? And I think um, ultimately the answer to that is, uh, the first question I'd ask rhetorically is, you know, how many people in your organization or how many people do you know that don't have a smartphone? Um, probably not too many. Um, and I think ultimately you can't sort of hold back progress because of a very small proportion. Um, our people does have the ability to send uh, messages as SMS. Um, so there are obviously tools out there where you can sort of include everybody as well, even those who have a more basic phone. Um, but that's often a hurdle. And then the final one is, you know, we, we've bought this expensive software solution and, and nobody's using it. Nobody's engaging with it. And I think really um, the key there is around, you know, how are you communicating with them? What content are you pushing? And I'll, I'll obviously come back back onto that in a second but just to give you a really good example um so virgin active um are one of our our customers um and they were actually um averaging about five percent engagement via yammer before they put our people in um and effectively um so this is a quote from emma leeds who's, who's a pro uh, people project manager so she said our people notifies the sender when this message is read so we know that on average 78 percent of communications are read this is a result of an uplift engagement with an average response rate of 72%. So I think really it just sort of shows you um, how if you can get the balance right with mobile, um, then ultimately um, it, it, can really, it can lead to some very positive results. And just to touch on communication specifically, um, I wanted to just talk about how um, we get those engagement rates up. So it, just when you're looking at content specifically, there's sort of four areas, um, certainly within the R People platform, that generally tend to do quite well. So um, again, looking back to last year, looking back to lockdowns and furlough and all of that sort of nasty stuff we were all living through, um, we saw a real shift towards video um, and, and audio. So video, obviously, um, a lot of sort of CEOs were sending out updates, sort of, you know, selfie style updates, it didn't have to be polished studio style updates um, but they, they got really really good engagement from from teams um, and the other thing that we saw a shift to was was audio so the idea that you can you know record a, a short one two minute almost sort of uh, I want to say podcast but not quite um, but just just that sort of difference to sending out a you know 20 page PDF um, really really lifted engagement with teams um, then on top of that, sort of, um, our people has sort of GD, GDPR compliant chat within it. And what, what a lot of our customers do is, is they create sort of very specific groups for employees to be able to speak to one another. Um, and, and that was something that was very key. Um, we also saw a lot of um, pulse surveys. So we've got the ability to sort of send out very short, um, quick and snappy pulse surveys out to, um, out to various teams. And that was something that, that kind of worked really, really well. And then something um, that we, we actually launched earlier this year, Smart Forms, which again, I'll come on to in a bit more detail in a second. But this was sort of our first step into business operations. So the idea that you can create a form which employees can complete through the app. Um, so whether that be, you know, ordering new uniform or reporting a defect. And effectively what we were doing here was building a more compelling reason for employees to download the app onto their phone. Um, and that's ultimately been delivered through smart forms, which again, I'll come to in a, in, in a bit more detail in a second. So I guess ultimately, if we accept that mobile does work, I just want to go through a couple of slides on, you know, key drivers for employee engagement and, and employee productivity. And I, I want to start off with um, looking specifically at employee engagement and, and I guess just having those sort of deskless workers in mind. So not so much the people who are working as managers who have access to email, it's the people who have less access to, 
to email. And generally, just to kind of highlight, um, we, we sort of see three areas around deskless workers. Um, so th these are sort of key. So agility, and what I mean by that is that deskless workers, they often need to be sort of agile, need to be on the go. They don't have a lot of time to sort of sit down and, and, and read and read pages of information. Um, and so ultimately, you know, they're not gonna hunt through lots of content to find the thing that's relevant to them. And the other thing that we see, um, and we kind of class it as sort of update fatigue. So it's the idea that if that message or if that piece of information isn't relevant to me, if it's too broad, then ultimately I'm not going to engage with it. So these are sort of all challenges and things to bear in mind when you're trying to sort of engage these employees um, who are very sort of frontline. And I wanted to give a really specific um, example um, of something that we did. So um, if we cast our mind back to March 2020, I know uh, people generally don't like to think about it anymore. Um, but back at the time, um, we, like I'm sure many businesses, sort of went, oh my goodness, what's happening? Um, how can we help ultimately? So um, we as a business decided that we would create a version of our platform that was very, very, very quick to set up and roll out. Um, so what we mean by that is we, we could literally roll it out in the space of a day within 24 hours. Um, and we made the decision that we'd, we'd offer it free of charge to the NHS. Um, and we started working, so we're based in Bristol, we started working with um, uh, Serona Care and Health, so they effectively, they, they're a provider to the NHS. Um, and effectively, what we what we went into was a team of people who'd been sort of overwhelmed by mass email communication so they were literally receiving um you know hundreds of emails a day and the the problem with email as i'm sure everyone knows is it's actually very different difficult on a mass scale to know if that email has been seen so if you imagine these are people who are going into people's homes the sort of care staff nurses um, they, they needed a really, really good way of just delivering specific information as things were changing on a daily basis. So over the course of a, a three week window, which is ultimately what we sort of tracked initially and worked with them, um, they sent out 27 pieces of, of communication. Um, I think, I believe there are about sort of five, 5,000, may have been slightly less, 4,000, 5,000 5, people in the system. Um, and they received 42,000 interactions with, with our people. So effectively that could have been downloading an important file or responding to a survey or um, completing a certain piece of information. And they were effectively witnessing a response rate of around 95%, which obviously is, is pretty compelling. Um, so that was that was just another example of where you know if you get the balance right, if you get the message right, employee engagement can be can be incredible. Um, and and yeah, and fast forward uh, to now, we're still working with them. So uh, so that's good news. The other area I just wanted to touch on was um, employee productivity um, and just looking at um, sort of more within the workplace and how we can how we help and how what we see there. So um, Deloitte ran an article um, where effectively they said more than 10 million UK workers um, could be using smartphones to boost productivity. Um, and effectively, that's just looking at, you know, how can we use mobile technology not just to communicate with staff out of hours, but also within the workplace? Um, so that Deloitte study said a third of the UK could be using smartphones to be more productive at work. Um, and really, again, it sort of goes back to that wasting time by hunting for what's important. You know, they need to they need to complete a task. They need to do something. Does it mean they have to log onto a computer and wait 20 minutes for it to start up? And then also there's this sort of doubling up um, attitude. So this idea that, you know, maybe you need to complete it on a piece of paper. And then at the end of the day or two hours later, you go to a computer and you fill it out on the computer once it's started up. And so it's just, you know, how do you get away from that? What can you do to improve that? So I, I think really um, smart forms, which I touched on before, that's something that we've certainly been um, using to help our employees massively. Um, and the idea that, you know, the smartphone's in their pocket, so access to it is far, far easier. But just going back to that idea of, we see the importance, but we don't know the value. Ultimately, we need to be able to measure 
And, and that's really the key thing. How do you calculate value when you communicate with employees? It's a difficult, difficult question, um, but, but hopefully I've, I've got an answer for you. Um, so I, I always think of a, a quote by a guy called Peter Drucker. I'm not sure if anyone's uh, familiar with him. So, so he's got sort of credited with inventing modern bus business management. And he said, if you can't measure it, you can't improve it. And so ultimately, uh, this is the only screenshot of our software in the entire thing. So shameless plug. Um, but effectively, um, what, what we can do as a business um, is we can, we can absolutely help you measure in terms of communication. So we can help you target it to the right people. We can help you make sure that the content is compelling and interesting for the employee to engage with. We can give you all of the stats on, you know, who engaged with it, how, you know, what was the potential reach of it within your organization, who saw it, who interacted with it. But there's, there's a sort of a major caveat to that really, which is software can only really take you so far. And so as part of delivering our people to our customers, we actually work with them to help them measure as well. So the, the real issue is that a lot of companies, they track inputs. So effectively what I mean by that is we sent out 50 mail, mail shots to all of our employees in the last two months. We posted three newsletters to our employees in the past year. And the challenge that you've got with that is it's great that you measure that, that input, but ultimately what is your business trying to achieve? So, so we use these sort of four areas. So inputs is effectively, you know, are we, are we sending engaging content to the right person at the right time? Output, did we achieve what we intended to do and do we know why? And then we've got kind of more employee specific. So outtakes, did our staff hear the core message and what we were trying to convey? And then the final one, which is the most important is outcomes. Because of those inputs, did your staff actually do what you wanted them to do? And so ultimately, that's what we focus on. And I just, I guess really just wanted to provide um, sort of an example of um, how this might um, appear slightly differently to what you might envisage. So to give you the example of health and safety. So imagine an organization where they've spent a lot of time training people through our people um, on various um, health and safety initiatives, sort of um, micro learning courses, that kind of thing. And you would assume that health and safety incident reports would decrease because ultimately people are more, um, more clued up, they won't go tripping over things. But actually what we see sometimes is an increase because ultimately they're more aware. So I guess really that's just sort of a really good example of, you know, you create an output, you train people, you, you provide them with more information and, and that, that kind of input provides an outcome which is actually slightly different to what you would originally envisage. So I just wanted to share that example. So um, I guess really finally, in conclusion, um, what makes communication amazing? Um, so mobile, engagement is key, absolutely key. Um, the content needs to be relevant, it needs to be specific to that individual. Otherwise, they won't engage. Um, and that content has to be engaging. And video seems to work really well. That seems to be kind of the thing that people really are drawn to, but there's lots of other ways to do it as well. Tools to track are important and you need those metrics. You need to measure those inputs, but also ultimately the measurement's based on outcome and not income. That input are the most, uh, the most important. So yeah, hopefully that, was, uh, hopefully that was useful. And Bogdan, I'll hand, hand back to you, I think. Thanks very much, Ross. Very interesting presentation. Um, we do have some time to go over some questions. Um, so if you had some questions, do please ask them now. Uh, we've already had a few come in. Um, so the first one is, how does our people deal with messaging team members out of hours? Uh, that's a good question. Yeah. Um, so yeah, obviously you're making a shift to mobile. So maybe you've used an intranet, maybe you've used um, email perhaps. Um, so I guess really two answers. Um, the first one is being, so, so within our people, you can create content and you can share it. So I guess the first thing to say is you need to be 
uh, mindful of when you share that information with people. And, and again, when we get customers set up and with training, we work with them to, to kind of talk about that. Um, and then a purely kind of software based answer um, is that you can schedule things. So ultimately, if you wanted a communication to go out, you can be very specific about what time it goes um, and when they can when they can see when they can see it. Um, so, so that generally is kind of the best best way of getting around it. Education and and software scheduling uh, the two two answers to that. Cool. Thank you. Um, next question is. Um, is mobile use generational? So, for instance, our younger for younger workforce is more likely to be turning to using mobiles for work. Yeah, it's a really good question. Um, so, I, with our product, um, we designed it in a very specific way. So, obviously, I've not I've not really shown the product during this presentation, but just to sort of describe um, how it works. So, effectively, when the employee opens the app. We use um, what we call cards. So effectively, um, it's sort of short, snappy bits of content that they can sort of swipe across the screen. Um, a lot of our competitors, they, they sort of go for a more social media, um, sort of uh, social networky kind of interface. Um, and so the reason that we went down the cards route is actually we just wanted it to be as simple as possible to use it. You open the app and you see the most important, most relevant thing to you. And generally the feedback from our customers is that that tends to work really, really well. Um, we don't store age information through the product because we don't need to, we don't, we don't hold that information. Um, so we don't sort of have data specifically on ages, um, but just sort of anecdotally and from, from you know, speaking with our customers on a, on a daily, weekly basis, um, the, the kind of the mixture is a lot more um, sort of spread than you'd think and it's it's not all these sort of young millennial types and nobody else it, it, it tends to engage everyone really because of the simplicity cool thank you um, next one is um, is our people able to link with an HR system such as cypher <laughs> yes good question um, yeah, so yes, absolutely. Um, so that's obviously a partnership that we're we're launching with with um, Cypher right now. Um, so so that's happening. Um, and I guess uh, in the remit of this presentation, uh, Cypher is probably the only one really to mention, Bogdan, because um, <laughs> yeah, no, no other HR systems exist. <laughs> <laughs> but yes, absolutely, that's something we do. So so I guess just to talk to that really quickly. So effectively, what we do is we pull in employee first name, last name mobile number we can also pull in email as well and then we ultimately pull in the hierarchy of their location their um uh, their job roles their job titles you know i might be getting the terminology wrong for sort of cypher world but we can pull in all that data as part of the integration um so ultimately you've got one source of truth um that you can then communicate with the employees and and, and ultimately just to say that obviously if somebody leaves if they're disabled in Cipher, they're automatically logged out of our people. So it's you know it's quite quite a slick integration there. Yes. Excellent. Good stuff. Um, next question: um, Is there a facility to deliver training across this platform and monitor engagement? Yeah, really good question. So we are absolutely not a learning management system. That's that's not something we've ever set out to be. But what we are very good at is maintaining knowledge. So we have a section within our product called Learn, which basically it, it allows you to build courses, but it makes them very sort of snappy. So, so you can create content, so you could send out a training video, for example, or you could send out um, you know, some, some information that's very, very concise, and then it will quiz employees. So it'll, you can you can send like a three or four or five section, um, question quiz and it will mark them and score them. So it will do that for you, absolutely. But it's not, it's not designed to be a full blown learning management system. We're kind of that, you know, how do you maintain their knowledge of health and safety? How do you maintain their knowledge of manual handling? You know, that, that's kind of what we, what we really do well with. Um, but obviously anyone who's interested can absolutely uh, we happy to show that in more detail if they want to book into specific demo. Thank you very much. Um, next question is, many of our workers do not have smartphones. How do you work around that? 
Yeah, really good question. Um, so I I would love to know what sort of percentage um, that that um, is at. Um, I guess sometimes we have customers who they just they only want to provide work phones. I'm wondering whether there's something there where employees have been provided with a non-smartphone work phone. Um, that could be it. Obviously, I, sorry, it can't be a dialogue. Um, it, it is something that exists, obviously. Um, the, the, the short answer is we can send communication via SMS. So effectively, if you build a communication to go out to 100 people in your organization, we can automatically detect who has downloaded and installed the app and who hasn't. And let's say 10 out of that 100 have not downloaded the app. You can then create an SMS message instead, which will go to them and it will just do it all automatically for you. Um, we've also, um, we're just about to launch the ability to do via email as well. So you, you, can, you can, again, similarly, you can send out to 100 people, 10 people don't have a smartphone at all. We can then send an email instead and that, that's an option. Um, so that's kind of how we get around it. But, but just to be really clear, Bogdan, you know, we, we are a mobile first tool. Um, we've built a business off, off being mobile first. Um, yeah. And generally the sort of the proportions of people without a smartphone are, are quite often less than, than you think. Okay. Um, next question. Um, we have consumer details on file for our customer advisors. How do we ensure no GDPR or DPA risks? Um, okay, so I'm assuming that that's, um, yeah, okay, no, it's a good question. So I guess the first thing to say is, obviously, anything that you're sharing via mobile, and if you make the decision to do that, there is no way that from a software point of view, we could stop that individual from, um, from having that data. There's just no way of doing it. And, and just to give you a really good example, they could take a photo of the screen. Um, you know, th 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 there's basically just no way. There's no way of, of of stopping them do that, doing that. So I think that the most, the, the kind of the, the bluntest answer is, you know, if that piece of information is so important that they cannot access it um, anywhere but the workplace, you certainly wouldn't share it via our people because th th there's just there's just no way around it ultimately. But again, just to sort of say, you know, if you if you're providing access on a computer in your workplace, there's nothing stopping them taking a photo on their phone. So there's, there's always a bit of a risk there. So it's just ultimately finding that balance between that employee needs inf that employee needs access to important information versus guarding that information. And it is a tricky, it's a tricky tightrope to walk ultimately. Um, we, you know, we, we don't make it easy for employees. So part of our people, we, we provide a file center so they can effectively kind of access files and you can decide who sees which files um, and folders. Um, and we don't make it easy for, for them to download, but at the same time, you know, they could get another phone, they could take a photo of the screen, they could record their screen, you know, there, there, there is ways around it. So the short answer is if it is so confidential and so important that they cannot access it on a phone, then we just advise don't, don't put it on, on the platform. Thanks for that, Ross. Um, next question is, we have a diverse workforce, many of whom their first language is not English, so usually Romanian, Polish, Bulgarian. How does this work in the system? Yeah, really good question. So um, obviously we're, we're operating in America as well, so Spanish, French comes up quite often. Um, so we, we have people using it in different languages. You can tag people with certain languages. So we have, um, I think we've got a factory based in New York where they've got a big contingent of Spanish speaking workers. So they've just basically tagged and said, this is a Spanish speaking person. So when they broadcast out, the, the communication goes out to those people in Spanish and that works. Um, we are bringing in, I believe Q2 next year, the ability to actually sort of inline translate that's something that we're looking at as well um just to make things even easier but at the moment they generally tend to sort of tag and profile the people with the with the language um on there and it will then they'll manually send out the communication in that language that's how it works at the moment but it's a good question good question and then finally somebody's pointed out that the survey at the start they use a communication combination of methods so it might not you know it might not be totally accurate in terms of you know they can only select one answer um, some people might be using for instance 
you know, the WhatsApp group and and Facebook or something else, which yeah. is a fair point. Absolutely. Yeah. Um, and I think it's probably something you come across quite often in terms of, you know, how people use internal comms. There's usually a, a variety of tools, whether they're integrated or not, I presume. Yeah, absolutely. Um, and I think, well, I mean, let me just give you a really good example. So Circo's a customer of ours um, and we initially launched with Cir Circo Fitness and they described the use of WhatsApp and Facebook within their their business as a as a pandemic <laughs> um <laughs> and so i think you know they used our people as a way to basically stamp that out and, and remove it um uh, just i guess partly from a gdpr point of view i guess but um yeah i I'm, i fully appreciate there's a mixture um and i think from a from a business point of view it's, it's about sort of making that decision about how you want to communicate with your employees and then sort of going that route and being really consistent with it um, because the problem is if you if you kind of if you allow these sort of things to organically open up and progress and then you do end up in a situation where you've got sort of multiple areas where employees are using different different tools for, for different different things um, so I guess, yeah, it's about making a business decision and deciding which route you want to take ultimately. And that's um, obviously something I can't answer. Hopefully that's sure. a bit of insight. Thank you. Um, and the final question, and one that I, I can get behind fully, is uh, filling in forms on a phone is such a nightmare. How do you get people to do it? <laughs> yeah, it's a good question. Um, so yeah, I mean, two two things really. They they've got to want to do it in the first place. Um, so it's you know how are you using it and what's in it for the employee. That would be my first answer. Um, and then secondly, you know, it, a lot of it's down to sort of UI and design and tweaking it and making it as sort of um, it's obviously all this stuff that's way above my pay grade. Um, but it's it's you know making sure that you don't have a form that's 20 pages long making sure that the fields are really easy to get into and navigate and that's something that our people does really well it sort of makes it really simple really easy to input something um and and yeah being really concise you know people aren't going to sit there for hours filling out a form if you make it really short you know two three or four questions then they're much more likely to complete it and that's really the nature of what we do keeping things concise and that that generally tends to work very well Thank you. And somebody's asked a question that's related to to, to that one. Um, so, if what if online forms contain secure data, mm -hmm. like employee bank details? Yeah, absolutely. So everything that goes through our platform is encrypted. Um, again, it sort of depends where you want that data to end up. So, from an integration point of view, um, you know, it'd be good to have a conversation about how where you wanted that data to land eventually. Um, but everything that goes through our our, our system is is encrypted, so the, de the data is safe. Um, it's just the output and where it goes. You know, if you if you export a spreadsheet, for example, um, that's probably the bigger risk. Uh, but again, it's difficult in this sort of environment to sort of it needs to be a two way conversation on specifics, really. But hopefully, that gives you a bit of an indication. Yeah, absolutely. Thank you very much, Ross. Um, so I think we've come to the end of the presentation for today. Uh, so thank you for taking part and thank you once again, Ross, for the excellent presentation. Um, if you'd like to discover more about Cypher's people management solutions and our people, opt in to find out more using the exit survey you see after the webinar ends and someone will be in touch. That survey will also ask you for a bit of feedback about today's broadcast, which will help us improve our webinars in the future. So do take a couple of minutes to fill that in if you can. Thank you once again for joining us today. And we hope to see you at a future Cypher webinar.